Hey guys, it's Miss Butcher. This video is 5.9, write polynomial functions and models. And what we're going to do in this one is look at graphs or look at some tables of data. And from that information, we're going to create the polynomial that goes with it. All right, so here's a graph. And I'm asking you to write the cubic function that is shown. So this graph, I've given you lots of points. And you can pull out the three zeros. x equals negative 4, negative 2, and positive 1. And when you know the zeros, you can write the factors. Um, we have f of x equals, and then um, we have a factor of x plus 4, a factor of x plus 2, and a factor of x plus 1. And if we were just doing any generic um, cubic function with those zeros, this would be enough. But we could have an a value here in front that would stretch it or shrink it. And so we need to figure out what that a value is. The way you can do that is to use another point that you see on the graph right here and plug it in for x and y. So for y I'm going to put negative 8 thirds equals a times and then for x I'm going to put 0. 0 plus 4, 0 plus 2, and 0 plus 1. Should be minus 1. Sorry about that x minus 1. Okay, so we've got negative 8 thirds equals a times 4 times 2 times negative 1, which is going to be negative 8a. So if negative 8 thirds equals negative 8a, and I divide both sides by negative 8, I get 1 third. a is 1 third. So now I can write my function I'll put it under here, y equals, or f of x equals, a is one-third, and then I have x plus 4, and x plus 2, and x minus 1. And you do not have to put this one in standard form. You can just leave it in factored form, just like that, because this function gives you that graph. All right, now you're given a table of data, and we want to figure out um, what polynomial would fit this data. So we're going to use what we call finite differences. We're going to find the differences between our y values. This only works when the x values are equally spaced, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those aren't negatives, those are dashes. Um, so then when the x values are equally spaced, we can find the differences in the y values. So when the x values in a data are equally spaced, like I said, the differences of consecutive y values, that's called finite differences. So we're going to find the differences. We're going to subtract 1 minus 3, we get negative 2. 3 minus 5, we get negative 2. 5 minus 7, we get negative 2. And 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So they're all the same, and it don't, we only had to do one set of differences. Since the very first time we did this, these were all the same, we call this first order differences. And that means that this is a linear function. All right, so here's a new one. Look at this data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for our x. So those are equally spaced. If I took the y values and subtracted 3 minus 1, I get 2. 1 minus negative 2, I get 3. Negative 2 minus negative 6 gives me 4. And negative 6 minus negative 11 gives me 5. Those are not the same. So we have to do this again. Now we go 2 minus 3, we get negative 1. And then we do 3 minus 4, and we get negative 1. And we do 4 minus 5, and we get negative 1. Now they're all the same. It took us two rounds of this, so this is second order differences. And first order was linear, second order is quadratic. And so on and so on. If it took you three rounds to get finite, um, to get all your differences the same, then that would be cubic. If it took you four rounds of it to get all the same, then it would be quartic, and so on. 
Okay, so the finite differences then tells us what type of polynomial we have, what degree we have. Um, now I'm going to show you how to actually get the equation. Linear, we already know how to do. A linear is y equals um, mx plus b, right? Which we could say um, ax plus b, just to keep the letters a and b. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to use two sets of data, two, two points. You need two points to make a line. So um, in that linear table that I had earlier, let's go with um, 0, 1, and 1, 3. You just need to pick any two data points because it, through any two points you have one line. And then we could say um, when y is 1, x is 0, plus b, which means that b has to be 1. 0, 1, your y-intercept is 1, and then um, y3 equals a times 1 plus a b of 1, so 3 equals a plus 1, a equals 2, and you can uh, write y equals 2x plus 1. You're just plugging in the two points, um, same way you've always done it. But now when we're doing a quadratic, it gets a little harder. A quadratic equation is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we have to use three data points. We have to use at least three data points to find our quadratic. And yes, when we did our quadratic chapter, we learned how to do this with stat calc quadrag in the calculator. This is how you would do it by hand. Okay, so Let's go with the quadratic that we had earlier from the table that we found out was second order, so we made a quadratic, and let's take three points out of there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to plug in our x's and y's. So these are our y's, and these are our x's. But I have to do it three times because I have three points. So for the first one, I'm going to say 3 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And for the second one, I'm going to say 1 for y equals a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. And for the third one, y is negative 2, so negative 2 equals a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. And if we clean that up, that gives us 3 equals a plus b plus c. 1 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. And negative 2 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. So what I have is three equations and three variables. a, b, and c are now the variables. Those are the things we don't know. And we did actually learn earlier this year how to solve systems of three equations with three variables. We could do some substitution or some elimination, or then I taught you the uh, augmented matrices. So I am going to let you use an augmented matrix. However, on the test, when you're asked to set this up, I want to see this here, and I want to see this here. I want to see it all set up by hand, and then you can put the augmented matrix in the calculator. So if we're going to make an augmented matrix out of this, uh, let me move all this stuff up. Hold on. It's going to be, remember we put our, our answers actually go at the end. So we have A, B, C, and 3. We have A, B, C, and 1. And we have A, B, C, and negative 2. Like that. And you can do the REF in the calculator. And it'll give you negative 0.5, negative 0.5, and 4 as your answers. So that's your A and your B and your C. So now we can write our quadratic. Y equals negative 0.5, or negative 1 half x squared, plus BX, so minus 1 half x, plus C, plus 4. So that's how you do a quadratic by hand. Now, of course, if you had no calculator, you would have to solve this using elimination or some of those other fun things that we did earlier this year.
right, here's another example. Here's your table of data, and I want you to give me the equation that goes with that data. So the first thing you have to do is figure out, well, what kind of equation is it? What, what degree of a polynomial is it? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for my x's. And this time your table's horizontal. You could be given a vertical or a horizontal table. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. And then we have our f of x's or our y's. So we're going to find the differences. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. 10 minus 20 is negative 10. 20 minus 35 is negative 15. 35 minus 56 is negative 21. And 56 minus 84 is negative 28. Okay, they're not the same, so it's not linear. Let's try again. Negative 3 minus negative 6 would be 3. Negative 6 minus negative 10 would be 4. Negative 10 minus negative 15 would be 5. Negative 15 minus negative 21 is 6. And negative 21 minus negative 28 is 7. So second order is still not all constant. They're not all the same. So it's not quadratic either. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. So these are third order. Um, and third order means cubic. All right, well, if, if it was quadratic, we had to have three sets of data. So for cubic, we need four sets of data. We'll just take four of these points. It doesn't matter which four. I'll just go with the smallest four. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the quadratic, only a cubic function is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And I'm going to plug in four ordered pairs, so I'm going to have four equations, and I'm going to make a matrix out of it and solve the matrix, because you can use augmented matrices for any um, amount. It doesn't have to be just three by three. It can work for four by four or five by five or whatever. All right, so let me scoot this up, or over, actually. I scooted it over, and we'll plug in our data. So we've got the y's are down here, remember, so we've got 1 for y equals a times 1 cubed plus b times 1 squared plus c times 1 plus d. Then the second ordered pair, y is 4 equals a times x is 2 cubed plus b times 2 squared plus c times 2 plus d. Third order pair, y is 10, a times 3 cubed, b times 3 squared, c times 3, and d. And the fourth data pair, 20, equals a times 4 cubed plus b times 4 squared. This gets a little bit tedious. You don't have to write all of this every time. c times 4 plus d. So we have 1a plus 1b plus 1 plus c plus 1d. I'm going to put the answer to the right this time <clears throat> because when we do our augmented matrix, we like to have them on the right. Or they need to be on the right. All right, 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. And then 2c plus d equals 4. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. 3c, 1d gives me 10. And 4 cubed is 64, so 64a plus 16b plus 4c plus d equals 20. All right, create an augmented matrix out of that. So we'll write it down. We'll use the magic of RREF in our calculator, and it will give us an a of 1 sixth a B of one-half, a C of one-third, and a D of zero. So I'll take those, let me scoot this up a little bit, write my cubic, and then I'll be done. Y equals, or F of X equals, one-sixth X cubed plus one-half X squared plus one-third x plus zero.
So there is your cubic function that goes with the data in that table. And here you go. I haven't given you a joke in a while, so you know. Have a good night.